In this video I'm going to be showing you a bag sealer that I made using an old broken laser copier. To make this project I had to remove the high temperature roller that you're looking at right here. It appears to be a very dense silicone foam rubber and I also had to remove the fuser which is a ceramic heating strip which the paper with the toner will pass directly over between the roller and the fuser. When the paper goes between there with the toner material which has been electrostatically deposited onto the paper, the heater melts that plastic toner material onto the surface of the paper and then it comes out the opposite side where it's complete. In order to make this bag sealing unit, I had to make this bracket. This was from scrap. Now 95% of this was from scrap. The only part that I purchased for this is this plastic housing that you're looking at. The cord came from an old toaster thrown away. LEDs I pulled out of old electronics. This switch was from a computer. This was from something else at the dump. The steel I found in trash and a bunch of the components inside, those are from trash as well. To get a closer look at this bracket and how I made it, drilling the hole and threading it to accept a 632 screw, take a look at this picture right here. This end here is made out of stainless and aluminum. I needed a pivot point so I can open this up to insert the material that's going to be heat sealed. And I also added this little plate. The reason for that plate is to keep the handle nice and straight. Without this plate on the end, the handle would not stay in the upright position. It may flop all the way to the side. I'm going to take this out of the way now. I'm going to show you the schematic, what I did. This is the 120 volt line. Line neutral from the line into a 2 amp fuse. Once it flows through the 2 amp fuse, you go into the on-off switch. After the on-off switch, you have a 36K resistor going into the power indicator LED. Now I have a 4007 diode connected backwards across the LED. The reason for that is to only allow positive pulses to go through the LED and then the negative pulses get directed around the LED. Some LEDs do just fine, even with the negative pulses, but some of them do not do well and will burn out very easily. So that's the reason why I added that. From the junction of the AC line after the switch and the power indicator, you will connect up a 14 microfarad 250 volt capacitor. Across that capacitor is a 510k ohm half watt bleed resistor. The capacitor voltage must be rated a minimum of 250 volts and the capacitors that I use were pulled from old ceiling fans. After the capacitor the current then flows into the fuser and then the other side of the fuser connects to the neutral line. Using a 14 microfarad value for the capacitor you can go a little higher if you want more current to flow or a little lower if you want less current to flow. The voltage being supplied to the fuser is 19 volts AC, 750 milliamps. Using an infrared thermometer, I tested the ceramic heater to be around 280 degrees Fahrenheit. This unit is designed, you turn it on, allow it to heat up, it only takes about a minute or two, and then you insert the bag, press and hold for 5 seconds, release, and the bag is sealed. I'm now going to give you a demo using what you see right here. This is a small Ziploc bag. It's a special type. This is Mylar food sealing bags. And I'm going to take a bag of chips just to show you if you open them up, you could reseal them very easily. Now before I turn on the unit, I could leave it as is, but I prefer just to push it to the side. It only goes that far each direction. Turn it on. See the power indicator? I'm going to wait around a minute and a half. I'm going to be speeding up the video though so we don't have to wait the minute and a half. After that minute and a half has passed, this will be hot enough 
to seal all these bags. Inside the fuser, there's also a thermal cutoff, which is not shown in the schematic. It was part of the fuser. In the event this gets too hot, what will happen? The circuit will open, and you'll no longer have power going to the ceramic heater. Luckily, the way this is designed, I'll never have to worry about that. I could leave this on all the time, and because of the capacitors that I used, this will only reach around 280 to 290 degrees Fahrenheit. The first bag we're going to be testing is this chip bag. Some people don't like to finish the chips when they open the bag, so now you can seal them back just the way they were before you opened them. I'm going to try right in the middle of the bag here, right above these two chips. We'll give it a shot. Here we go. Place it in. Push down. Lift it up. I'm going to let it cool a minute and show you how good this bag has been sealed. You can see right through here it's been done. Let's take a peek. Look how tight that is. All the way down. Pretty neat. Now I'm going to take this little baggie here. See my finger goes all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to seal it about halfway, right after this label, and show you how good that comes out. And that's all finished. Look at how nicely that's sealed. See it? Right there. I'm going to try putting my finger inside the bag. You can see it's sealed right to that line. It won't go any further. Lastly, I'm going to take one of these food storage bags. All right, slide it in, and we seal it. And that's all finished. Look at that line, how perfect. Yep. Sealed nice and clean right across. Nice and tight. Try pulling hard. Try tearing it open. It's very hard to tear open. Actually, I don't think I can tear it open. So once again, something that was thrown in the trash, I turned into something extremely useful. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.